everyone, I'm Dr. Lena Brzozowska and welcoming you at my YouTube channel and some other social media. And uh, I continue to do podcasts with amazing, unique people of the world. And my guest today is Ricky Higby. And I need to tell about him a little bit more. He's a speaker, educator, a coach, life coach. And he did his PhD at Trident University International, right? Yes, He's specializing in uh, resilience, in uh, suicide prevention. So you're a suicidal prevention speaker at United States Air Force, which is amazing. Welcome to podcast. So, hello. <laughs> and what I'm actually interested in, in, um, in the program that you created, uh, Be As Built, it's mm. Say it's, it's uh, inspiring you to be the best version of you. I will provide all information to this program in uh, um, in information about this video. So you just scroll down the video. And also you can read more information about uh, Dr. Ricky Higby. So Ricky, welcome. And let's start about your program um, that you created for people to be yourself. And it's some kind of transformation program. And I like it very much because I was reading this information about you. So I give you the word to explain more uh, how you build this program and what does it mean in your opinion to build uh, to be as built? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Alina. It's a privilege to be able to sit here with you. Um, when it comes to be as built, there's a couple of variations, uh, a couple of aspects of that. Uh, we want to focus on individuals being able to one just be which in our crazy world of social media and all those kind of things um just being oftentimes is um can be a problem so we we'll use things like um, mindfulness and different resilience aspects um to help people just learn how to be uh, for me as an individual um, i'm not good at just being um, i'm more i'm better at doing so it's also a learning process for myself as well um, but when you look at the whole the whole word there, be as built, um, I believe personally that we are designed, we are created to be able to do a certain thing. Um, oftentimes in organizations, we will say, we want you to be um, work on your weaknesses, um, be okay at everything. But research really shows that when and I saw um, Dr. Seligman was kind of on some of your, yeah. your bio and stuff. When you look at the resilience piece and positive psychology, when we look at finding what somebody their what their strength is mm -hmm. and allowing them to delve in and to use that, um, now they are working in that and especially if they get to that flow state. Um, so that's really the essence of be as built. We want you to be as you were built to be. Um, so for myself, you don't want me to fix your car. Um, your car is going to be worse off after I touch your car than um, if I were to try to fix your car. Um, but I know a lot of great mechanics. So let's get the mechanic to do the mechanic stuff. Now, if you want somebody to, to jump on a stage and kind of interact with folks, okay, then I'm, I'm your guy with that. So putting folks in position, a lot, uh, Socratic question is really, really big. So especially on that life coaching piece, through that questioning, enable, enabling one folks to mm -hmm. increase their aperture of who they are, um, what their desires are, what their values are, what their strengths are. So I'm opening that up so that they can dive into that and really grasp who they are and operate in, in their unis, kind of the, one of the ways that I like to put it. Um, when we operate in our unis, um, we are operate, all of those positive emotions happen. So when it comes to uh, mental state and mental health, mental health is improved with things like that. So when you look at Be As Built as a whole, I like to say the organization and my personal mission statement is using the art of oration to enable you to be the best version of yourself. So that kind of in a nutshell is what we're talking about um, when we talk about be as built. And it's, it's really it's there's a hashtag in front of that as well, because, um, again, when I'm operating in my unique set, mm -hmm. there's so much benefit that comes from that. And then I take that same attitude and I apply that to when we're speaking about um, resilience and positive psychology. I take that same kind of um, outlook when we are talking about suicide prevention, because that piece in and of itself of us knowing who we are and operating in that 
has such benefits when it comes to creating a culture and a space of value and respect so that I can be um, not just physically healthy, but then mentally healthy as well. And obviously that's going to have an impact on suicide prevention and that's going to play into the positive psychology uh, piece as well. So that kind of in a nutshell is who we are as BS Built. Thank you very much. And actually, your examples of uh, this comparing weakness and uh, comparing your strengths and also examples about mechanic, I like it very much because, first of all, the old psychology, the coaching, like all psychology coaching, was mostly about your weakness. And they said you go deeper and deeper and deeper. You're looking for this weakness. You try to make them stronger. And you spend time and nothing happens. And other examples, when you said mechanic has to be a specialist who knows what he's doing. And I was thinking, so we usually say, oh, you weak in math or you weak in geography. And you need to kind of improve your knowledge or skills or whatever. But I'm not going to be a math teacher or if I don't care about geography and no more, just like travel and enjoyment traveling, right? So why should I work on my weak uh, like, you know, weak sides, if I can concentrate more on what I am and who I am and how I feel. And what you're doing, it's amazing. You really want to see in people the strengths, the, the positive sides and work on this and and make people stronger. And I notice you use a lot of music in your program. You have even playlist on YouTube, right? So, so can you tell me a little bit more why, why music is so important? It's just like additional approach to people or um, I would like to know about this because not many coaches are using music in their programs right now that really for me so music has has forever spoken to me in a way just like art does for if it's some people it's painting but the the music piece really speaks to me and the, the way I really love to use it um is in a speaking environment Mm -hmm. because my goal is to not just come in and teach somebody or not to just come in and speak, but to create an educational an awesome educational environment. So as I, as on that playlist, everything somehow comes back to either causing you to critically think um, it goes in a direction of somebody who has been through a hard time and has come through that. And what can happen is you can walk out of that place with that tune now in your head, but now you've connected that tune to some concepts and principles that you're able to use as well. So if I if we have that music that is playing up front, those positive messages are kind of subconsciously getting in you in that time of transition into the event. Um, and then we then I'll come in and talk some concepts and principles about your best version of you or whatever it is that we might be talking about. And again, those tunes are still kind of going through your head. And then also having that music playing at the end as well, like bookending the, the event, you walk out of there um, typically saying, okay, that was a little bit different than what I'm used to. Cause oftentimes my audiences can be um, organizational audiences are there cause they have to be. Mm -hmm. So the organization says you need to have this particular education or training. So I will come in and do that. So finding any way that I can reach out and grab the, the attention of those folks. Part of my research um, it was all about presentation um, in andragogy. I even cannot pronounce android, uh, android, andragogy, andragogy. So andragogy being adult education, um, that when an adult looks at a, a learning event, if that speaker captures their attention, Research uh -huh. shows that the activation of the cognitive domain, the domain that is me actually doing something, is more engaged when that presenter was was engaging, was good, resonated with them. So that music really oh. is one uh -huh. of those pieces that allows that to happen. Yeah, it's true. And, and you know, I'm actually working on a course, uh, art therapy course, but it's nothing to do with this traditional drawing and expression yourself, catch as they draw some like pictures and then they try to discuss what they mean with this mm -hmm. drawing. But um, it's about neuroscience, about our uh, sensor like systems and how we use music and painting and drawing and uh, crafts and any other things like everything about art, how we can use um to heal yourself uh, and to improve yourself. So we kind of 
resonating in this. So let's talk about protective factors, algorithms you created. It's about how you divide your time, working time, uh, and how you use it, um, I would say, practically and beneficially uh, in your business life, and actually yeah, your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So really, this was um, the the breakout of the numbers was was something that came through um, Air Force research, and I just kind of gave it that fun name of perfective factors algorithm um, or protective factors algorithm. That when we do when we align these um, hours, um, it creates protective factors for us to create that environment of of better mental health. Um, so if I just break it down real quick, two hours of me time. So we use the phrase of put your mask on first. So I can't help if this cup right here is empty, then I can't use it to do anything until it is actually filled up. So taking mm -hmm. that very specific time for ourselves to make sure that we are filled up, to make sure that we are physically and men mentally um, healthy. So um, Dave Ramsey does this with money where he says we need to label, put a, put a name on every dollar. So this does the same thing with time. Put a name on every um, hour. So two hours of me time and then eight to 10 hours of work time. Every time I ever say that, people laugh. They're like eight to 10 hours of work. 12 hours is the norm for me. OK, well, boom, we just created an opportunity for improvement. Right. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So if we go to what Seligman talked about in his PERMA, that um, my ability to work, my ability to have an accomplishment, uh, my ability to be engaged that increases our positive emotion, therefore increases our ability to flourish as well. Mm -hmm. So being intentional about the work thing um, helps our mental state as well. Uh, so we go from two to eight to five, five hours of either unplugged social time or family time. In the suicide prevention piece, um, Dr. Joyner out of Florida State University did some research on the, the biggest thing that he found when it comes to came to suicide was connectedness. That when people were connected and they felt like they mm -hmm. had a sense of belonging, it decreased that chance of suicide. So when, when we're intentional about, you no, know, for these five hours within this 24 hour span, I know that I'm going to disengage from social media. I know that I'm gonna not be looking at screens. I know that I'm gonna have some kind of social interaction with my kids or my family time or whatever that might be. There's a positive impact that comes from that, that on the mental health side is very, very, very beneficial. So again, being intentional about carving out that time for those things. And then the final piece is the sleep piece. Um, and it says seven hours, but as we know that that varies depending on who we are, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but taking the time through um, the sleep information that is offered to the CDC or whatever that might be to say, okay, what works best for me? And then making sure that I'm intentional about getting that particular amount of sleep because we know that when it comes to us physiologically, all of the great things that happen when we are able to sleep. So when I can take, um, see the importance of sleep and actually do something about it, as opposed to that being the first thing that we cut, well, I have to do this, 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 and this, so I'm only gonna get four hours of sleep. No, 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 I'm making sure that I get that amount of sleep that I need because the benefits on the other side of that are just awesome. When it comes to uh, potential weight issues, when it comes to potential other physiological um, issues when it comes to uh, mental state, all of that um, is so benefited by this thing that we're calling um, sleep. So when I'm intentional about that, that is beneficial as well. And some people will say, well, that doesn't add up to 24. Um, you are right. It doesn't add up to 24 because we leave two hours of wiggle room in there that you're able to kind of ebb and flow um, with those hours. But again, the whole thing there is, am I intentional about labeling each of those hours so that I can use those hours for um, what they're intended for. Well, it's interesting. I was working in a hospital and the uh, working hours start from eight o'clock in the morning, eight a.m. But usually everybody was coming by 10 a.m. So I was the only one or probably a couple more people uh, in the morning. So what we were doing, we were drinking coffee, we were talking, we were reading some news and chatting and this is what we did and then i start thinking like evaluating how i spend my time when working time 
And I said, no, it's like wasting your time. I have to kind of be orga be organized. And I shouldn't care what other people are doing. So I stopped paying more attention on reading articles. So by 10 o'clock, I read a couple articles, news, medicine, and some other subjects. So I was very happy about this because it, this is what, like my starting hours, right? So I can knew more. And then uh, it took me like three hours to get in and back from the hospital. And I was at three hours every day I spent for driving or mm. going on the subway. So what can I do? Reading, but sometimes it's boring because it's shaky, like, you know. So I start knitting, knitting for my for my family members and friends. <laughs> at least it's relaxing. Talk about five things you can control in life. Five things that we can control. So this was really something that I pulled from Dr. Irshad Manji. Um, and she um, talks about these five things that when we are interacting with people, um, things that we're able to con control. Um, Dr. Seligman talks about it as too, as far as active, constructive responding. So here are the five things that she said. So she said, take deep breaths to facilitate rational thinking. And when we think about this, and I do this all the time, when I take that deep breath, <laughs> I can feel a physiological response happen in my body, which is absolutely stellar and amazing. But She's the smart one here. And she she talked about the fact that it, it takes, not just engages the back side of the brain, but now it's engaging that front side of that rational thought. So that when I am sitting down and engaging with something, somebody that I may disagree with, now I'm able to think better. That executive function happens a little bit better. And I'm not just responding out of that reptilian kind of kind of brain. So doing that, being intentional, I'm about that. So that was number one. And then two, intense intentionally establishing that common ground when we are communicating with those folks we have the it, it might just be the space that we have to happen to be sitting in at the time do we both enjoy our coffee boom that creates that environment where we are in this um together um number three generally inquire about the other person's perspective this i think if i could foot stop one of them i would foot stop this one okay i want i'm here to learn i'm not here to bulldoze my way through this conversation but i want to alina what is your response what is your thought on mm -hmm. whatever that might be therefore engage uh, creating that engagement um a dialogue to happen a respect for self so for myself so as so as a christian I have this thought of Imago Dei, that we are all made in the image of God. So that's how I'm looking at people, that I need to respect Alina. Why? Because she is she is an image bearer. So I want to hear your perspective because I don't know everything and I want to learn what you have. So that would be number three. Number four, actively listen to learn rather than to win. So there's a great connection there between three and four. I'm not in it to win it. I'm in it to learn it because I can become better in this situation. And then when we are both able to become better, our society gets better, our culture gets better. All of the craziness that happens gets better. And number five, encourage further dialogue. And I, this is where I cried when she said this one, encourage further dialogue by asking, tell me more. Because the example that she used had to do with um, a brown skinned individual dealing with a police officer. And so the person kind of bowed up and was was kind of being a little bit aggressive. And the police officer said, tell me more. And that just gee, that just de-escalated the whole thing because it showed that that person was interested in the aspect of that other in or the perspective of that other individual. By the way, one question. Do you sing? Do I sing? Um, yeah. No, not really. Do I uh, sing? Um, not officially, I don't. <laughs> not officially. Well, I'm not official either. <laughs> um, it makes me think of Greece. Tell me more. Tell me more. No, anyway, so that are you singing? Right. <laughs> so I think that one is great. Okay, awesome, Alina. You said this thing about obstetrics and things of I don't understand. Tell me more. Therefore, it, it creates that dialogue. So yeah, absolutely. Five things that we have full control over when it comes to communicating with another human being. I mean, doing it in a way that is respectful and is going to um, move the conversation in a positive direction mm -hmm. as opposed to battling each other um, head to head. You're such a passionate and energetic speaker. Like, that's why people following you. And um, this is your 
power your strengths and i'm really glad that you uh, have this effect on people because uh, and i see your your schedule is so busy thank you thank, thank you, you uh, very much for this interesting very passionate conversation and i'll see you in the next podcast so whenever you have some free time let me know so all the best yes thank you so much have a wonderful day thank you bye bye all right bye bye cannot pronounce android and and tragedy android and red and tragedy android and red and tragedy okay and uh let's talk about the protective fact protective fact protective fact